What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear brakes on this 2015 Chevy Silverado. If you need these parts or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. Loosen up these lug nuts, take a 22 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Just go around, just loosen them. Don't take them all the way out. Now we're gonna raise and support the vehicle. Just make sure these are all loose. Take the lug nuts off. Just grab the wheel, pull it off. You want to take these two caliper bolts out on the back side of here. Uh, we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket. And on the stud, you can actually use a 20 millimeter wrench, which not a lot of wrench sets have 20 millimeters, so you could use a 13 16 if you don't have one. So I'm going to loosen this up, make sure you have your ratchet unloosened. Take that, and I'm going to hold the stud with the wrench and loosen up the bolt. And take that bolt out. Now I'm going to grab the caliper. I'm just going to rock it back and forth a little bit. That'll compress the piston. Just a little, now I can slide it out. Then I'm gonna grab a caliper hook. We sell these at 1AAuto.com. Just hook it onto something so it doesn't fall. Just hook it into there on the frame. And that's good, it's not gonna fall. I'm just gonna take these brake pads out, just use a straight blade screwdriver. And these pads are pretty rusted in there, so. I'm gonna use a little, little pry bar. Get these out. If you have trouble getting these out, you can always take them out after you get the caliper bracket off. There we go. Now use a 18 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Take these two caliper bolts off. Now I'll switch over to a ratchet with the same 18 millimeter socket. All right, then you can take the caliper bracket, and just slide it up. All right, we're gonna take these off these hold the rotor on. Um, we don't need to put them back on. They just put those there for the factory so the rotors don't fall off. Just take a straight cutter. Sometimes they're a little difficult to grab. Grab it and just cut them off. There we go, do the same with this one. Now we can take a hammer and hit on the rotor right there to pop it off. This one is a little bit loose already. Now you can also take some bolts. They'll thread right into here. These happen to be the caliper bolts. And you can tighten this up. Now if the rotor's not budging at all, just tighten this a little bit and then uh, hit it with a hammer. This will help you get the rotor off. There is parking brake shoes underneath here and sometimes there's a rust ridge on the rotor itself and that is what prevents you from getting these off. And sometimes if you're going to replace the rotor, it's not a big deal. You can hammer it from the back side here. Just try to spin it. All right, there we go. Got it out, just worked it back and forth using the hammer. There is a lot of rust in there. And the shoes, see that rust ridge? That's what the shoes were getting caught on. 
So it's not necessarily that the shoes were adjusted out too far, it's just that rust ridge, because even the adjuster, it's not even pushed out that much. So even if I got in there, there's a little door right here, loosen that up, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. So you just gotta work at it. Here we have the old brakes. Here we have the new pads and rotors from 1AAuto.com. You compare the brake pads, the shapes are the same. It's the same pad material on the other side. Same squealer. Compare the rotors, rotor hats are the same height. Has the cooling fins, the same. And then it's got the drum for the parking brake on the inside. It's the same as the old one. Get yours at 1AAuto.com. So we want to clean up this caliper bracket before we reinstall it. Take a wire brush and we're going to clean up these clips. If you have new clips, uh, brake anti-squeal, anti-rattle clips, then you can replace those. So I'll just clean these up. Once those are cleaned up, I'm just going to take a straight blade pocket screwdriver, get underneath the clip. We're going to pull the clip off, just like that. I'm going to clean the back side of the clip use the wire brush, get some of that off, and then also on the bracket itself, use the wire brush. If it's real rusty here, you're gonna wanna take a file, file some of the surface rust off. Once those are cleaned up pretty good, take some caliper grease, we'll just grease this up underneath here before we put the clips back on. It's gonna prevent any further corrosion. And put the clips back on. And then we can do the same with the other side. Now we're gonna clean the slide pins. Just grab the slide pin, pull it out, and take some brake parts cleaner and a rag. Clean this pin off. Make sure it's not corroded and there's not too much rust buildup or anything. If it is, bring it over to a wire wheel or something. And then we want to clean down in there. Just take a little brake parts cleaner, spray it in there. Take a rag, clean it out. Take a little brake grease, put it on the pin. Reinstall the pin. Oh, the boot got stuck in there. I'm gonna pull the boot out. You wanna make sure the seal's on the pin. Sometimes these get stuck. Don't, don't rip it. There we go. Slide it on. There we go, it's nice and sealed. Then we'll do the same with the other side. Before we install the rotor, we want to clean this hub surface. Just take a wire brush and clean it like this. Get as much of the rust off as possible. So this surface is really rusty. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these sanding discs. We actually sell these in kits through 1AAuto.com. You can take these, put them on your grinder, your little die grinder and then just carefully go around the hub. You don't wanna sand too much, but just get a lot of the surface rust off. I'm just gonna take some brake parts cleaner, clean this all off. Let it dry off. I'll just wipe it down with a rag. Just get some of the excess off. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of anti-seize just on here. I don't like to put on too much because um, it gets all over the place. So just put a thin coat right around the hub area. Because this is the area where it corrodes. So 
just put a little. You can put it all over if you want. I just don't like it because it gets, once it gets on everything, it goes everywhere. So I just put a little bit on. I'm gonna stick this rotor on backwards. I'm just gonna take some brake parts cleaner, clean the outside. There is a protective coating on it to prevent it from rusting. So we'll just clean that off. Flip it around. Slide it on the front. Now, if you have to, if you have to adjust the parking brake, there's an adjuster right there. You can take a screwdriver and adjust it tighter or looser. These should just barely drag when you slide them on. Just a little bit of drag, and then you can you can adjust accordingly. There is a little cap on the back there, you can take the cap out, cap off and adjust them. Spray down this front side, wipe it off with a rag. Take this caliper bracket, slide it in position. You can put some thread locker on these bolts. Reinstall the bolts. Just take an 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet and I'm going to tighten these up before I torque them. Now I'm going to use a torque wrench with that same 18 millimeter socket. I'm going to torque these to 148 foot pounds. Now we're going to install the pads, but before I'm just going to take a little brake grease and apply it to the ends of the pads on both sides. Now this pad is the outside pad. It has these little nubs on the middle there. The inside pad does not have those. Just slide that in position. Make sure it slides good. This is the pad that goes on the inside. Um, the piston sits right there. It does not have those little pins that come out. It has them right there. Put some brake pad grease on the ends of these as well. Then I'll install this on the inside. That's good. Now we can take this caliper Slide it off the caliper hook. That out. Flip it over. Just make sure you check the dust boot. Make sure there's no cracks or rips or tears. We're gonna take this caliper compressor that we actually sell at 1AAuto.com. We sell multiple different kinds. This one's pretty cool. So you get the caliper tool in there, and we're gonna slowly ratchet this and that's gonna compress the piston back into the caliper. It's gonna push brake fluid through the hose, through the brake lines, back up into the master cylinder. It's always a good idea to check the reservoir after you're done the brake job to make sure the brake fluid level is where it should be. I'll just do this slow. Okay, now that piston's all the way into that caliper. So I'll reverse this ratchet style tool, and then I can slide this out. Now I'll take the caliper, slide it in position. Just like that. Take the caliper bolts. You can put thread locker on these. Right there. Then I'll take my 20 millimeter wrench or 13 16 if you don't have one of those, and a 13 millimeter socket and a torque wrench. Torque these to 38 foot pounds. I can reinstall the tire. Put the lug nuts back on. Just take my 22 millimeter socket, tighten these lug nuts down a little bit. Now I'm going to take a 22 millimeter socket and a torque wrench and I'm going to torque these in a cross pattern so that the wheel gets tightened evenly to 140 foot pounds. Then I can go around again, 
double check. Afterwards, we want to make sure we pump the brake pedal. There's going to be an air gap between the caliber piston and the brake pads. We want to eliminate that air gap by pushing down on the brake pedal. After that, we want to check the fluid level in the reservoir for the master cylinder. Make sure the fluid level's at the proper location and adjust accordingly. And then you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.